Okay, here's an attempt by me to try and give you more of an idea of what you actually have to do. It's a rough guide only, uh, so don't 100% rely on it. Okay, so you select a variable, and that's just where you're in the lab, you've given the data, you select it. You print the recomposed graph, and you also graph and values of predictions. Okay, so that's what you do in the lab. Then with the write-up, you've got to give trend as an average increase or decrease per unit of time. Okay, so you must provide that. You must describe the seasonal pattern. So is the graph mostly to do with season or is it a strong seasonal pattern because all of the things are close on top of each other, they're really nice and neat and tidy, or does the season sort of go all over the place and there's no clear seasonal pattern? So just say something about the season. There is a seasonal pattern, for example. Um, so that's cool. There is a clear seasonal pattern. There is not a clear seasonal pattern. That's all we need for achieve. Comment on the residuals or how close the trend and seasonal is to the data. So when you've got your recomposed graph, you can see the raw data is in black and the finer line is the computer model, the trend plus the seasonal. So you can say how close they are to each other. So if you hardly see the fine line, you can say it looks like a good model. The residuals um, down the bottom is the error or the, the difference between the computer model and the actual data. So you could express the residuals as a percentage of the range of the data, but for achieved it's probably enough just to say, um, looking at the graph I can see that the trend in the seasonal is actually very close to the raw data, so it looks like a good model. In context means use the units. Okay, so use the units of time, if it's months, say months, if it's quarters, say quarters, and use the units, which you really have to read carefully for, um, of whatever unit is on the y-axis, so y-axis, x-axis, here is time, and here is sometimes, well with the ice one, it's millions of square kilometres of ice, okay, so watch that. Um, Let's use the units. Now give a prediction in a sentence using units. So just pick out one prediction that you've printed for one month and say, I predict that, and give the sentence in context. Your conclusion, all you've got to say is, it's a good time, it's a good model, the predictions are good, or it's a rubbish model, the predictions are bad. Okay, just state it, state the obvious. So that's for achieved. Now for merit, you get a second variable and you compare the two, but this sort of stuff would be at a higher level. Okay, so that I've talked about kind of the bare basics here, it's going to be a slightly higher level, and the important bit is that you compare. For excellence, you do the same thing again. Oh, I wanted to change colour. The same thing again, all the way down, but this time it's for your own variable that you've made up, and you need to provide a list of resources that you use whilst researching. So you're actually giving evidence, um, background reading, that kind of thing. So it's a whole other level again. Okay? So doing the achieved one variable, that doesn't have to be as high a standard as it does for merit. So I've given you here the basics for achieved. Clearly for merit and excellence, we're wanting a little bit more in depth. So if you're just looking at passing, look at that and notice that and that and that is in the lab so when you are writing up you've got one two three four five six things to make sure you do so it's quite a lot